Welcome to 1000 PS TV. Honda starts the offensive with electric motorcycles and scooters with the EM1A. How does the compact scooter ride? I'll tell you all about it in this video. The world's largest motorcycle manufacturer is now also launching the mass production of electrically motorized two-wheelers. It starts with the EM1E a compact scooter designed to provide mobility over short distances. It is therefore positioned above the well-known and for many somewhat annoying e-scooters, but below the league in which Honda is very successful with various 125cc models. It can therefore be compared with classic 50cc models. However, it is probably also in competition with e-bikes. Although these are only allowed to travel at 25 km per hour, they can use cycle paths. On the other hand, High-quality e-bikes are usually even more expensive than e-scooters. However, the scooter is not an alternative to a 125cc scooter. This is definitely in a different league and Honda will offer a suitable product in the coming years. I know the world of e-mobility as well as the world of e-scooters from personal experience. I am very satisfied with my electric cars to date. I have not yet been completely convinced by e-scooters. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a filling station in my hometown for years. So, for pragmatic reasons, I prefer those means of transport that I can recharge at my local power socket. However, the quality of the products on offer has not yet convinced me. Apparently, the price of the batteries is so high that the manufacturers have to save on all the other components in order to keep up with the gasoline cars. Developments are now playing into the hands of electric vehicles on several fronts, on the one hand, petrol cars are also becoming increasingly expensive, and the tax framework is largely more attractive for electric vehicles. On the other hand, the development and production figures for electric vehicles are on the rise. In this respect, the first impression of the Honda em one was very positive. The sleek design looks decent and the vehicle appears very tidy. The LED indicators are integrated into the fairing and all the switches, levers and controls make a full-fledged impression this is a product from a genuine motorcycle manufacturer. The controls are refreshingly clear. There are two brake levers, whereby the rear brake even sends part of the braking force to the front as a combination brake. This feature is normally only found on larger scooters and motorcycles. In the cockpit, there is a USB socket and a small hook for a shopping bag. Eco mode can be selected using the rocker switch. This increases the range from around 40 km to around 48 km. However, this option is frankly not recommended for adults weighing 75 kg, unless you want to consciously use the journey home from work to slow down. The good impression of the vehicle is also confirmed on the first few meters. The electric motor responds silky smooth and is wonderfully easy to control. The vehicle is super accessible and very easy to drive. The brakes apply the braking force very precisely and sensitively, but also offer sufficient reserves for energetic braking maneuvers. The biggest difference to cheap products is, on the one hand, the good control of the engine, but also the good chassis. The standards here are obviously unusually high for the class. Stability is very good even in challenging situations. The little runabout is also stable in fast bends and is not distressed by streetcar tracks. The front wheel measures 12 and a 10 wheel is fitted at the rear. This vehicle is in a completely different league to the classic cheap scooters often found in rental fleets. Even as an experienced motorcyclist, you feel safe and enjoy using the EM1A. On paper, the 90Nm torque seems very impressive. However, it has to be said that the acceleration of the vehicle is very accessible and unspectacular. The vehicle allows 45 to 50 km per hour on straight stretches. The acceleration behavior is reminiscent of a classic 50c petrol scooter. The e-motor in the EM1E is therefore not a joyful acceleration monster, but an accessible propulsion instrument. Of course, I paid a lot of attention to the range. According to the WMTC measurement cycle, 30 km can be achieved. In practice, this measurement cycle is probably not quite suitable for these small city runabouts. During our test ride in spring-like temperatures, 40 km proved to be a realistic value. The Honda EM1 e weighs 95 kg and offers a payload of 180 kg. The 10 kg battery pack can be quickly and easily removed from the rear. I removed and refitted the battery pack a total of 15 times during the test. On the one hand, to be able to film from different angles. On the other hand, to test the plug connection. The entire mechanism seems very robust and well thought out. 
The battery pack is also a solid and high quality looking part. Honda assumes that future users of this vehicle will remove the battery pack from the vehicle and take it home to charge. The supplied charger is placed in the home. To bring the completely empty 1.48 kUWh battery from 0 to 100%, 6 hours at a normal socket are required. To get from 25% to 75%, 160 minutes are sufficient. Even if the whole mechanism works great, it looks like it was made to last. For me personally, another solution would be better. As a homeowner, I would like to charge the vehicle in my garage and simply work with a cable from the vehicle to the socket. But the target group is probably more the urban user for short distances in the city. Honda probably also meets the tastes of the target group in another area, but is not quite on my line. The vehicle is only offered in a leasing version. The cost should amount to 80 to 100 euros per month. Honda wants to relieve the customer of the responsibility for disposing of the battery and would like to have the vehicle back at the end of its useful life, a noble approach. But I myself would simply like to buy the vehicle and then enjoy the extremely low running costs. After all, insurance costs, maintenance costs, and electricity costs for the part are virtually negligible. In most European countries, you can drive the vehicle with your B license without any further test or course. Of course, you can also drive it with an AM license, which can be used in Austria, for example, from the age of 15. Like many scooters, the vehicle may seem a little uncool for young people. As a father, I know of course that cool boys and girls in the country are currently into 50cc supermotos and enduros. In this respect, I will of course try to make this vehicle appealing to my second son. On the one hand, the scooter makes a very safe impression on me. And on the other hand, I have zero effort in terms of vehicle maintenance. For the children, however, one of the most popular sources of income is no longer available. The popular scrounging for gas money from grandma, grandpa, and parents is no longer necessary. However, the issue may be different in the city. Even if Honda wants to appeal to young people with the scooter, I also see experienced people as a target group. People who appreciate the quality of the Honda brand and are looking for a vehicle for distances between 5 to 10 km each way. Honda shares the same fate as other manufacturers of electric scooters. The vehicle is compared with currently available gasoline scooters in the same performance class. Here, the gasoline scooters currently offer the better price performance ratio. The pendulum only swings more in the direction of electric vehicles when the costs are considered in the long term. Suppliers of electric bicycles can act quite differently here. Here it feels like much less technology is offered at a much lower quality level. As a motorcyclist, you can only marvel at the prices charged for electric bikes. But given the sales figures, these prices should not be a problem for most customers. Basically, the vehicle is not new territory for Honda. On the one hand, the group has already gained a lot of experience with various hybrid vehicles and e-cars. On the other hand, around 10,000 vehicles based on the EM1 e are already on the road in Asia. These are used by delivery services with two and three wheels. Experience has already been gained there in terms of durability. Honda promises 2,500 charging cycles. The seat height of the scooter is 740 millimeter. You can ride comfortably at 185 centimeter height. I was able to negotiate tight bends without the handlebars hitting my knees. And when riding the scooter, you feel comfortable and not at all out of place. Honda obviously takes this issue very seriously and sent us on a really practical test ride. We drove through the city center of Oslo. The asphalt quality was very good, but there were a few braking bumps and also some streetcar tracks. A detour to the Holman Collins ski jump was also included. The ascent to the ski jump was steep, but the scooter got us all safely to the top. As an e-vehicle enthusiast, you miss recuperation on the way down. This is not on board. Of course, the advantage of a lightweight vehicle like the EM1E is manageable, but it simply feels better to charge the battery than to heat up the brake disc. Nevertheless, the positive feelings prevailed on the downhill section. Even in the long and fast bends, the cute Honda scooter remained stable and instilled confidence. As with some other electric scooters, the Honda scooter loses the coveted storage space under the seat due to the battery. All that remains is a meager 3-liter compartment for a mini shopping trip or a compact rain jacket. In practice, most prospective customers will probably order a top case. The location was also chosen well by Honda. The proportion of electric vehicles in the city is very high. Even the harbor is eerily quiet. This is because the ferries and boats are also largely powered by electricity. 
There's a pleasant background noise in the city, and you glide through the clean and tidy streets and alleyways in wonderful silence. Honda has made a decent start with the e -Moni. The vehicle will be delivered to dealers in winter 2023. 2024 and can be driven on the roads by end customers from spring 2024. Inclusion on the Honda EM1A 2023. The first electric scooter from Honda looks well made. It has good brakes, a decent suspension, and offers stability and safety. It is a fully fledged vehicle in the smallest vehicle class. The engine responds flawlessly and the whole vehicle is playfully easy to operate. From a technical point of view, the vehicle is a recommendable product in the 50cc class. However, a normal purchase is currently not possible. Honda currently only offers the vehicle as a leasing option. Thank you for watching this video. If you have questions, comment below. We will try to answer everything. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed our content, please consider giving us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos in the future. Stay tuned for more.